Hi, first grade. We're back for another lesson about fire safety and fire prevention. And we will have an assignment today, and I will explain it to you at the end. It is this do's and don'ts paper. And I will explain the directions for that for that when we are finished with our lesson today. But we are going to go ahead and go through a Pebble Go about fire safety. And remember on Pebble Go, it's kind of silly sometimes where you'll hear noises or voices on there. I will be reading and going through it, but you might hear some voices introduce the tabs that we click on. All right, so here we go. All right, here we are for our fire safety pebble go. And this first tab says how fires start. It says fires can be very dangerous. They can start by accident in many ways. A candle could tip over. A frayed cord that's plugged in could create a spark. Once a fire starts, it can easily get out of control. It is important to be careful around fires. And over here, the word accident means something that is not planned. Like we've all had accidents before where we drop something or trip or whatever it might be. So it's super important to try and be very careful around fire, of course, and make sure that we know what to do if for some reason that happens. For example, I love candles, especially now when the weather is a little bit cooler, lighting like a delicious smelling pumpkin, yummy candle just really makes it smell awesome in your room. But you have to be very, very careful when you have a candle lit that you don't accidentally bump into it. Okay? All righty. Smoke alarms. There's that voice I was talking about. All right, smoke alarms. And we've already learned a little bit about the importance of smoke alarms in the um, Brain Pop Jr. we watched yesterday and also in that first story that we read on Monday. And it says smoke alarms are meant to detect fires. They should be placed all around your home. Smoke alarms in and near bedrooms are especially important. The alarms make a loud sound when they sense smoke. Smoke alarms can wake you up if there is a fire, and that is super important, especially the reason why they're so loud, one of the big reasons is because they are intended to wake you up if there is a fire. Because if you're peacefully sleeping and all of a sudden there's a fire in your house, you want to be woken up so that you can get out of there to keep yourself safe and get your family to a safe place. Have a plan. Alrighty, so know what to do if there is a fire in your home or building. Have an escape plan prepared with your family, teachers, or other, or other trusted adults. Practice getting out of the building quickly. Pick a safe meeting spot outside away from the building. Right here, the word escape means to get away from. And then prepared means to get ready for. So for example, you guys probably remember from kindergarten that you had a fire drill. And that fire drill, we do that so that in case that ever did really happen, we knew exactly what to do, right? Or we know exactly what to do to keep us safe and protected. So if we get back in the building, we will of course have those fire drills because we wanna make sure that if that does happen and there is a fire, boom, we're out of the building. We're able to keep everyone safe and protected. So it's very important to know what to do, obviously, at school, at your house, and anywhere else that you may go. Staying safe during a fire. If you are trapped inside during a fire, stuff clothes under the door. This will help keep smoke out. Get on the ground where there is less smoke. This will make breathing easier. Stop, drop, and roll if your clothes catch fire. So what's really interesting is that actually I just learned something about stuffing the clothes underneath your door that's super, super smart because underneath your door, even though your door is closed, there's a tiny little area where air can kind of get in. So stuffing clothes underneath there is very smart in order to keep the smoke out. And if you remember from the My Fire Safety booklet that we did together yesterday, there was that picture where there was the kid that was crawling underneath the smoke and you had to draw the smoke up above the kid's head or body, right? So it's telling you to get really low to the ground because that smoke is going to start off being high. So get really low to the ground to try and stay underneath that smoke. And then, and that will help you to breathe easier because smoke makes it hard to breathe. And then, um, stop, drop, and roll, like we learned about in that first story we read on Monday. So for some reason, your clothes catch on fire, stop, drop, and roll to get your clothes to not be on fire anymore. 
do's and don'ts. All right, do's and don'ts. It says, do not re-enter a burning building for any reason. Do not hide from firefighters. Do shout for help if you are trapped. So if you can't get out, you got to shout for help so someone knows that you're there, especially if firefighters are coming to your house and they are trying to get people out. They want to know that you're there so they can get you out. And it says, do call 911 from a neighbor's house. So your first priority is to get out of the house. And once you get out, then you can call 911 to get those firefighters to come and help you out. Okay. And what's actually really, really awesome is that leads us straight into our assignment today, which are more do's and don'ts. For this assignment, you will need scissors, glue, and a pencil just to write your name. So I want us to get in that great, amazing habit of writing our name at the top of our papers. So you'll write your name at the top of the paper first. And that what you are going to do is you are going to have to cut out all of these little sheets down at the bottom. So for example, these all right here, they're all numbered. Don't worry so much about the numbers, but you're just going to cut them out on the dashed lines, making sure you separate your strips, okay? And what it says at the top, it says do's and don'ts of fire safety. Do you know what it takes to be fire safe? Cut out the labels and glue them in the proper column. So I want you to try and work hard to read this on your own, but if you get stuck, you can of course have someone at home help you out. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, brother, sister, whoever's with you helping you out. Um, and you're going to read and decide, is that something that you should do? Or is there something that you should not do or a don't, okay? So for example, this one says, get out fast. Do you think that's something you should do if there's a fire? Very good. So you would end up cutting that out and gluing it in the do section of your paper. And then how about play with matches? What do you think? Yeah, I agree. You, it's a don't, right? You should not play with matches. You'd glue that over here. Another way that you could do this to make it easier for yourself is you could take your highlighter. And I know you guys all have a highlighter since that was gifted to you at the beginning of the school year. And you could pick one of the categories. For example, maybe I say I'm going to highlight my do category. And you'd highlight the word do. And then down at the bottom, you would highlight any sentences that belong in that do category. And you'd leave any sentences that belong in that don't category blank. What that does then is it makes it super, super easy when you go to the cutting and the gluing portion. Because then you know any of them that are highlighted go in this highlighted do column. Any of them that are not highlighted would go in the don't column. It's up to you. You can either just cut the strips out and end up picking and gluing them. Or if it makes it a little easier, I would say start by highlighting it and then highlighting any of them that are in the, that belong in the do column. And then once you cut them out, they should be easier for you to glue. Okay. So pick what works best for you. And then once you are done, take a picture of this and post it directly onto Class Dojo Portfolio. And I look forward to seeing all of the awesome do's and don'ts that you guys are able to organize into the proper categories. And we will continue talking about fire safety tomorrow. All right. Have a great day, first grade.